rather be with you I'd much rather be with you the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and I am coming to you from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark where I live in a small house uh, just in the neck of the woods with my partner and our two small children. And uh, this is a knitting podcast. If you're new, welcome. And if you have been here for a while, welcome back. I generally talk about what I'm knitting on. I talk about my designing and the designing process and Sometimes I talk about sewing and other crafty stuff and yeah, it's been a while since I've been here um, last, just life happens and I'm on maternity leave so it's really hard to find time to sit down and record. At least I feel like there are a million other practical things I should be doing so I kind of push recording um, to the back and it is not on the top of my priority list at the moment. Um, yeah, it's November and it's super foggy today. Uh, maybe you can notice the light is really uh, bright and just do you say diffuse or yeah, it's uh, yeah, I feel like I'm in a big, big cloud and it's been really cold and I feel November is here. So it's time to snuggle up in all the warm cozy knits and drink some tea. Today I have some green tea with mango it's organic green tea from tender tea and i just ordered some more i didn't order this one this time i still have some left but i have some new ones coming and i'm super excited about that um yeah i i hope you have all been well and that you are feeling super excited about winter coming and cozying up and all the needs and christmas is just around the corner i must admit it has been a little bit strange for me because I kind of lost my knitting mojo for a while. Um, not so much. I kept knitting, but I didn't feel inspired at all to work on my designs. I didn't feel inspired to come up with new things. I just, or anything that involved like more complicated uh, stitch patterns and so on. I just, I just didn't feel like it. Um, I, I guess there are a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'm blessed with the cutest little boy who is now almost 10 months and he is adorable he's so sweet during the day but man he's not the best sleeper <laughs> so i just generally feel really scatterbrained and i find it really hard to focus on anything especially at night time when i have a little more time for knitting mm. let me just put this back so i just haven't felt much like yeah, I couldn't focus on the harder stuff. So I've been knitting on really simple and easy things. Uh, like this one I'm wearing today. This is one of my massive finished um, objects. I, mean, I don't know if you can see. Let me just see if I can jump on the sofa. I've never done this before, so just a second. Okay, so it's a big cardigan like really loose it doesn't have uh, buttons but it has this wide um, garter uh, edge around the or like a button band but it's not a button band and uh, yeah it has really long sleeves and probably too long but I really wanted long sleeve sleeves so I can put them like this and keep warm because I often get cold hands uh, and it has this shawl color that folds over. 
Um, but the idea with the sleeves is also that I can just fold them down, so I made them really, really broad. Um, and I can fold them like this, so I have a more like a normal length sleeve that doesn't feel completely crazy, but I really like them like this. And this is also got a stitch, and then on the sleeve it has these little this texture pattern. Um, I knit this in uh, Knit Picks uh, City Tweed, I think it's called, and it is a lovely, lovely, super soft. Um, a little bit sleek or like different from what I'm used to. It's not so toothy. I think I have something. Um, and it is uh, a mix of wool and alpaca, which I think is just so lovely. And you know, I love tweed. I love this color. It's very Christmassy. Um, but I just love this deep red burgundy color. And actually, I'm a little bit too warm in this one, but I'm going to keep it on just for a little longer because it's so cozy. Uh, and it's a raglan construction. I kind of, oh, I don't remember when I cast it on last in the winter sometime. I have showed it before on the podcast, but yeah, I was knitting on this uh, massive neckband going all the way around that just is got a stitch and it took forever, but I didn't have to think at all. And it was the perfect thing to knit on while I was not feeling very inspired and just to get something done and I managed to finish it um, I don't think I will write up the pattern, at least not now. I don't know, it's not... Um, I just really wanted a nice house cardigan, like I can... something really cozy I can just throw on and um, I didn't really write the pattern down. I took notes because I always do that just in case I really re regret if I don't take notes um, as I go, but I don't know. It's not, it's not something I feel like is on the top of my priority right now. I have other patterns that I feel more excited about. This is just like a, but I'm really happy about it. And I really like the texture I came up with that you can see like it makes this little bumps. I think it's still visible in the tweet because that's something that's really difficult to find the right amount of something that suits the tweet. Um, yeah, so. I still have some balls left of this uh, of this yarn. I think I might make a sweater for the little guy or another uh, little brother's romper by Petit Knit. I've knit that before, so I have some ideas for the remaining skeins. And um, yeah, this is the cardigan. I think I'm gonna take it off because I can feel like I'm getting really warm. <laughs> Um, so you can see it's it's massive. It's just huge um, and it's so lovely to have. So that's we went just jumped straight into the knitting. Uh, that's my first finished object. I don't remember exactly when I finished it some weeks ago I think. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram where I'm also Fiber Tales you will have seen me posting some pictures when I was finishing it. Um, just to complete the super cozy vibe, I'm actually wearing my Lumi socks today. I don't know if you remember these, if you've been watching for a while. Oh god, it's hard to show your feet on camera. Um, and these are my really chunky house socks that I wear all the time. Um, knit in Alpha Slopey and I published the pattern just before Christmas last year, I think, last winter. And I've actually seen a lot of people knitting them right now, so that's super exciting. And I think also quite a few Danish uh, knitters and a few podcasters. I saw Strekkefein, which is a new to me podcast that I didn't know about um, in Danish. She's talking about knitting them for her advent calendar, so go check her out. Um, there are actually a few Danish podcasters. I think I will talk more about them in another episode because I can I haven't watched all of them and I don't want to miss out on anyone but um yeah I'm just discovering a lot of new podcasts I also didn't watch podcasts for the longest times so like I guess just came with the not feeling inspired and I didn't feel like watching other people talking about knitting I don't know I was just not feeling like I just I felt like knitting but not really thinking about knitting so um I'm getting back into things and watching podcasts and so on Okay, so the other project I cast on while I was not feeling much like knitting anything is this, and it looks 
very uh, worn <laughs> is this little uh, sweater I made for my boy. It is um, the Flax Slide by Tin Can Knits. Uh, I didn't feel like doing any math myself or thinking about the pattern again. So, and this one, I, it is just a stockinette sweater, but I turned it inside out. So I decided to keep the reverse. I did that because this yarn, which was a stash yarn that I got in a yarn swap, uh, it's from Robin Roots, I think. And um, I had a yarn swap with her last two years ago i think maybe or one year ago something like that and she sent me this this is her own hand dyed yarn and uh, i just thought it was so 90s it was so fall 90s colored that i had to do the reverse stock in it but as you can see it is extremely worn um he he wears it pretty much every morning when it's a little chilly in the house and um it is a uh, uh merino cashmere nylon blend i think and then it is very soft but boy does this one just doesn't wear very very well for a little boy who is sliding around on his belly now he started crawling but when i made this he was still scooping around the floor all over and it's just looking terrible i i'm gonna try to glean it or, or like i have this machine but i just wanted to show you what it looks like after what a few months of wear and it is also completely felted here in the front even though it shouldn't be able to felt but with all the drooling it just yeah it still manages to felt i would have knitted a little longer i don't know it, it looked long but then it kind of shortens i don't know so uh just a little pattern just a little uh but it's a free pattern on ravelry from tin can knits and uh, it's really easy to knit up for a small person in a if you have one skein i also think i showed you talking about <laughs> i just found this on the way and this is uh, the little vest i knit him in earlier in the year i think in the spring and it is so felted in the front i don't know if you can see but it's completely solid from all the drooling and it also doesn't look that amazing anymore it has a lot of uh, it, uh, yeah it can need some fixing up but this one is not it seems like if i just remove this underneath it's it will look really good whereas this one is just so fluffed up i don't know what it will look like after i clean it up. maybe i will just show you on instagram stories or something if i get it done but um yeah little baby knit knits are really good to make when you're not feeling so inspired and just need to knit on something quick and stuck in it um, and yeah those are my finished objects and i have one more finished object that i just want to tease you a little bit with i i won't show all of it it's behind me here i have shown it on instagram a little bit and it is one of my one of the designs i'm most excited about i actually I had to leave it for some time because of some construction issues. I finished it and I didn't like how the neckline looked. So I decided to, I had to rip it back, but um, since it seamed, it was just a lot of work. Unpicking the seam, changing the shoulders and the neckline and then seaming it again. I, I don't mind seaming, I actually like to, to, to seam. I think it's really satisfying, especially if you do a mattress stitch but i didn't want to um yeah i just didn't feel like unpicking it and seaming it again and all that so it kind of got left to the side um we went to italy for a week which was really nice i went to see my host family from when i was an exchange student there um and i yeah i didn't it just i just lost interest in that project for a little bit but then I picked it up again and I'm super excited so it's done uh, and I've shown it on Instagram just the back I'm not going to show the front because I want to keep a little bit of a reveal for the front which has um, an interesting panel in the front with some cables and some other fun stitches but uh, the back is also I think really beautiful I just chose to keep that simple anyway let me show you so this is the the sweater. 
and as you can see it's quite boxy and wide but i promise you it looks really nice on it's cropped um so it uh, hits you at the waist or it hits me at the waist and it has these big little bit balloony but not so much sleeves um and it is in the most beautiful squishy fabric that you can imagine it is a uh, called honeycomb brioche and uh i'm back to brioche because i know that so many people find it intimidating but really it's not i used a method this time that is like a two-step brioche uh, so instead of doing the four rows that actually counts as two if you know brioche you kind of work each row twice around and on this one i did a two-step so you kind of uh, just work two rounds or rows and then um, in the case of this one you kind of shift the brioche stitches to one side so you get this honeycomb it's a bit like if you think of um, uh, seat stitch and seat stitch is the same that you have knit pearl knit pearl and then next row you have pearl knit pearl knit so honeycomb brioche it's extremely soft squishy wonderful and uh, in the middle there's just this reverse uh, stockinette stitch panel uh, so yeah this is the back and it has some braid details that i will i will of course as i always do i will talk more about the design when we're a little bit closer to uh, releasing it i hope this design will be out in february i have uh, just started the testers yesterday um, and it is actually a fairly quick knit because you knit it uh, with a worsted weight yarn on a size five millimeter needles i think is that eight in us oh, i always forget um so it's a relatively quick knit so maybe it's out before but i didn't want to i in the past i've given short deadlines and i just feel like it gives puts too much pressure on everyone um i still really want it out before winter is over because it's a big chunky sweater and it doesn't really make sense to have it out in spring um i think you could knit this in a few weeks but i don't want to put so much pressure on my test knitters also it's really different if you're knitting a size extra small or a size two extra large or uh, this time i've graded it up to 4xl or um uh, i can't remember the bus size on 4xl anyways i've i have both bus sizes and uh let's say the numbers um but I, I try to grade it up as big as I can find testers for at the moment. And maybe I can, if anyone out there wants to test it in any larger size, I would be very happy to make the larger sizes and give you more time to test it or anything. So uh, you can always contact me if you're interested in any of the sizes, let's say above three extra large, uh, because those are the ones I find really hard to find testers for. Enough about that. It actually has another interesting detail. I don't know if you can see it, but it has like a dropped hem that came in naturally. Um, so you don't have to do anything. It just shapes itself with the pattern. So that's really exciting. Um, yeah, I can talk a little bit about the yarn uh, in case anyone is interested in getting uh, yarn for this or looking for yarn or because it's actually a really interesting com combination that I was super excited to find. Um, I used Sneldan. The skein is a little floppy because they come in this huge skeins of uh, three or four. Like they put them together. So when you take them out, they just look very floppy. This is Sneldan, um, which is a yarn from the Faroe Islands. Uh, and this colorway is number two. So it's the one just after white so they have white is number one then there's two which is a light gray and they go up and it is a uh, worsted weight yarn it is not soft like uh, it's rustic but it's not itchy at all it's so wonderful and i have a scarf in it my fur shawl by melody hoffman i have shown that a lot of times and you can also find it on my ravelry page and stuff in my projects and um, 
yeah, this yarn is, uh, it's, I can wear it as a scarf, so I was sure I wanted to knit something with it. Uh, but they don't have that many colorways. They have some really bright colorways, I think. Um, Isabel Kramer, she, she made a sweater using Snelden with the yellow. They have a yellow and the gray. Uh, her ranunculus or something, I can't remember. One of her sweaters is... Um, Anyways, <laughs> I just remembered that, but uh, they don't have that many colorways and the colorways are quite strong and I like something soft. So I was playing around with uh, combining it with the silk mohair and I found this beautiful, beautiful color from um, uh, Knitting for Olive. They have the most exquisite colorways in, well, all the yarn, but the silk mohair is really nice and this one is called um, Rosalia, which means like rosy clay, rose clay, something like that. And I just held these two strands together. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit. This is all I had left. I used four skeins for the sweater and I have a little bit left of the fourth ball of um, silk mohair. And I just love, let me show you again. If you can see on the reverse stockinette, I just love, first of all, it, it gets a little softer. It gets a little bit ha of halo, but I just love the marling effect it has. It's like watercolor and I think it's, it's just the perfect combination in my opinion to, um, let me just have a moment here. I'm talking so much, I'm getting a little thirsty. Oh, I think it's the perfect combination of that little bit rustic but still soft and very plump yarn together with the little sheen and fluff of the silk mohair so I just um, yeah I'm super happy with how the idea came to be and I'm really excited to see what my testers will make it in and what colors and that's always the fun part of uh, having something tested let me just check my notes. Um, yeah, I think that's what I want to say about the the pattern for now. Again, I will try to to talk a little bit more in depth about the pattern and the idea behind and all the constructions once I have um, once it's closer to being released or, or when I release it, as I normally do. That way, it's a little yeah. I can just talk about all the details instead of keeping something secret and not telling everything but i'm really excited about it and i wanted to share it it's one of my finished objects um and i have one more finished object and this is also something i have it's actually something i haven't shown at all because well a little bit on instagram because um where is it not here here um because it's uh, this together with the sweater i will release this one as one of my first patterns i have a bunch of things I knit up during this uh, year I've been gone uh, almost and um, some of yeah I just tried to decide which ones I will try to get out first and this is the next thing that I really wanted to show you and um, talk about again I will talk more in depth about it when I have I'm ready to release it but uh, for now I just wanted to show you a little bit better this shawl, I don't know if you can... Oh, no, it's blowing out everything. Let me see if I can stand up a bit. It is so hard to show things in dark yarn. Anyways, this is a very long, narrow, crescent-shaped shawl uh, in, again, worsted weight, and it has a lot of garter, which for me is not normal. I normally don't do a lot of garter, but I just wanted something really squishy and nice, and it has um this cable detail running along the bottom edge so it's pretty much just a lot of garter stitch and then you get to the let's say a little more fun part once it's getting boring because the rows are getting long there's actually something interesting to work on and let me just try to put it on uh, because i really love how actually i can keep it you can, I can either put it around three times or I can keep it with these long um, parts hanging down. And when you put it on, you can see the detail really nicely on 
the front. Uh, so I think that's perfect that there are not a lot of details in this part because anyway you cannot see them. It's nice when you're working on it but or if you want to show it out but um, yeah it's a little bit boring if you cannot see it so I think this is the perfect way to to have a little bit of something on the shawl. Um, it's really soft, it's really wonderful to wear and it has these long ends that you can either have hanging down or you can tuck them back and get even more warmth and um, it is uh, a yarn that I was uh, sent from uh, Madeline who is uh, um, the dyer behind Yama Fiber Arts. Uh, this is the label that the yarn came with and this is the Merino Linen Worsted um, that is um, South African merino and 10% linen. So it has, you can see the linen in the yarn as this like whitish gray, gray uh, strands. Um, and it just gives it a lot of life and, and yeah, excited, exciting texture. And uh, she sent me this so for a collaboration and I Actually, I contacted her because I have been looking for the perfect skein of some of an aubergine color, and I just think this is for me. This is the perfect amount of purple, brown. It is so aubergine in my. I I love it. Uh, it's called raisin, and I can see why. It's also very raisiny, and uh, it's just extremely beautiful. And I'm so uh, happy I got to work with her yarn. Um, so this is the next uh, pattern I will have out. I will try to get some better pictures so you can see a little bit more. Um, and this also I will call for testers very soon. Um, the other one is already being tested. This one I will call for testers in the near future. And hopefully I can have that one finished also for some time after Christmas. Uh, I just, oh, it's so... It's so it's a little bit cool from the linen, and I just love that because it is doesn't get too warm, and I don't overheat as I was in the other one. Um, yeah, so I really, really love this, um, and it's such a beautiful color. I feel like I'm talking about million projects, uh, and I'm going a bit fast, but I have so much to show. I just wanna bring you up to date with what I've been working on and. Yeah, it's just exciting to have a lot to show. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit fast. I promise I will come back this one as well. I will come back and talk about oh, once it's uh, closer to being released. And um, yeah, but there are a lot of exciting things coming. And now I have something in my mouth again. And that is probably some fiber from the mohair or mm, that, that. I don't know. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, those are the finished objects and there, there are only some of them. I, I'm not going to show you things that are not, I'm not going to, I have other things, but they will come out later. And so let's not talk about those right now. I have some works in progress. One of the things I cast on, and I've been going through my stash a little bit. Um, oh, I don't remember who sent me this skein. I was talking about that I really like tweet yarn and someone lovely viewer, Danish viewer sent me this skein and I think it's Kingfisher, yeah, it's something like that, but I couldn't find her. I think she's out of business because I couldn't find her on Instagram. Anyways, it's actually a little bit similar to what I'm wearing. It's just a long crescent shape shawl and now it's on the needle, so the shape looks a bit funny. Um, and I'm just knitting up the whole skein grab it here it is what's left and this was one of the i just want to knit <laughs> got a stitch and not think about anything which is quite similar to this one but um i'm just knitting a quick scarf for my girl uh to wear and i think actually maybe i will just make like a little free pattern for this one uh because it's super simple and it will just be got a stitch crescent shaped and it will be one skein fingering weight um, but what I will add to it that I think will look really good let me just get, get some of them I 
are these teeny tiny pom-poms I'm making with a small pom-pom maker so the idea is I will add these uh, along the edge in some way maybe like put oops two together here and then some later and I just want to add a lot of fun colored uh, when I have minis and leftover yarns uh, so I think this would be a really nice uh, thing to write up as a little free pattern um, that you can use up if you have one skein of one color and just a lot of leftovers I think it will oh, I have okay I think it will be fun to make um, yeah like a little free pattern so let me know if you're interested in that I will it's gonna be really short but it would just be fun to make and I just think it's so much fun to make the pom-poms and to pick the colors and these lovely together this is um uh, this yarn is the uyo colorway from uh, tuko wool uh, that i made my little mitts in and this is a uh, uh, madeline tush i think it's some mini skein i got also in this in a swap i think the same swap that I did with the sweater I'm pointing at it, you can't see it. So I'm gonna make a bunch more of these, of different yarns that I find and I will add them on. So that's one project uh, that I'm working on. I am also working on, which I'm, I mean, I'm working on a little cardigan for my girl, which is completely rolled up. Uh, it has, I decided because sometimes this yarn is a Danish yarn that's called Knudgarn, which is an organic uh, spun in Denmark, grown in Denmark, everything in Denmark, which I think is so great. Um, it's an organic yarn, but it's a little bit rustic and I'm afraid she won't like it in the um, around where it touches the skin. So what I did is I actually had some leftover uh, sock yarn from my Birkin sweater, if you remember that one. This is... Um, very nice colorway from uh, Urso Yanko and uh, I just decided to add that on the ribbing so it will be on the bottom band, on the cuffs and on the neck and then the rest of the body will be, I don't know if you can see it has a, yeah, just little yarn overs, little uh, eyelets and um, I actually cast on for a different pattern, I think from some sandness um, catalog and I just uh, it didn't look good in this yarn so I decided to skip that idea and just do eyelets so yeah it's a I'm kind of making it up as I go and I knit on this from time to time so this is also on my needles I cast this on a few days ago uh, yeah so as you can see I'm the mojo is back but then I'm knitting on that got a stitch shawl and on this one and they are quite simple and on small needles I mean the next thing I'm gonna show you is also on small needles but I just I don't know I don't know I didn't I felt like I needed something a little more fun and exciting so I was looking at my stash right now I'm not buying yarn I'm just going through my stash I have so many things lined up and prepared to go and my stash is it's not big but I just really like to try to get through it. So I was looking at what I had lying and I just remembered this tiddy, uh, this little uh, sock pattern that I designed last year in the spring maybe and uh, yeah I've been showing you a little bit on Instagram as well. Let me just show you. This one I've decided I'm not gonna keep secret it's sometimes a little more fun to show some of the projects I'm working on. So this is a little sock uh, and I'm knitting it on 2.5 millimeters. I think I said on Instagram stories they were three millimeters, but they're not. They're 2.5 Chiagu um, uh, nine inch circulars. So you can see they're just tiny, tiny needles. And I think they are perfect for color work um, because if you do color work on Magic Loop, I find it really gets really ugly where you loop and with this one I can just have a, an even tension all around with the color work um, so I really recommend these if you're going to try to make mittens or socks or anything color work 
they are really nice for for this at least i think so this is the the little pattern um so i had already knit like the cuff and a little bit and i just i just realized oh this would be a lot of fun to work on again and uh, i knit it when i got the idea i started knitting it in the um, i don't know if you remember if you watched my older episodes i had the um, Lana Grossa tweet yarn and I tried to knit it in that but the tweet was kind of interfering with the, um, the pattern, the, the colorwork pattern. So I was looking for another yarn and then I found, um, I saw that Sweet Sparrow yarns, probably know her, but Julie also has a podcast and is a really talented dyer. She came out with a 100% non-superwash merino yarn. Um, I don't know how it will be for socks, but I was just so excited to see that she had a non superwash yarn and because I really love her colorways, but I'm not the biggest fan of superwash. So I, she posted a picture of these three colors together Oops. on her Instagram. And there's a hair. Let me get rid of that. Oops. Let's do it a little more pretty like this. These three colors. So this one, I think it's called marshmallow. This one is called Cameo and this one is called Espresso. And um, yeah, she had these three and it's exactly the colors that I had picked in the tweed yarn. Exactly, but similar to the colors I had picked in the tweed yarn. And I just thought, this is perfect. Instead of using a tweed yarn that kind of ruins the color work. So I, um, yeah, I wrote her. I just asked if we could, I could use it for this idea and she thought it was a great idea. So she sent me the yarn and she also sent me the yarn for this one. I bought this yarn from a uh, D-stash she had. She had a lot of it um, and uh, another skein that I think I showed you earlier. So she sent me this, this yarn is perfect. Let me try to show you a little more up close, maybe not where the, where it's, uh, turning the round. Um, so the idea for this sock is really simple. It has a little uh, lateral braid. I love lateral braids. I don't know if you can see it properly. It has a lateral braid. It has some uh, stitch pattern and then it has what we call lubber. I'm actually not sure if these are lubber or loose because of the direction, but that doesn't matter. I call them lubber or loose. Mm. Somebody help me because I'm working it like this, but they will end up being like this. Um, and I decided to make them two colored. So they have a pink, the, the cameo and the espresso color. Uh, and I think that is a really nice detail. Um, so it's actually just gonna be this pattern all over the foot. It's pretty, pretty simple. And I think I just, I'm a sucker for this kind of little, um, nostalgic retro kind of uh, color work so just really simple but really like reminds me of a sweater i would have as a child or something and uh, it has a two by two rib mm. the yarn is super soft super lovely i don't know how it will hold up for sock yarn so uh, but i just had to get these colors so i'm knitting on this it's a lot of fun uh, i don't know when these will be out i'm not no pressure on these i'm just having fun with them but maybe i can write down the pattern come finish it when i have one sock done and try to get it tested as well see a lot of play a lot of testing happening now i also have to be careful i don't put too many test test knits out at the same time because it's a lot of uh the, there's a lot of managing the testing uh which always seems like, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. But if there are any issues, then it gets really, can get really intense, uh, answering back and figuring out and going back and forth with tech editors and stuff. So testing is for me can be sometimes a bit stressful. Uh, I have the sweetest testers. It's not their fault, but I just feel like I should be on top of everything, which I should, but, um, yeah, I think I should try to be careful not to put too many tests, have too many tests, tests running at the same time so these ones are a lot of fun i think they are super adorable and retro socks uh, and yeah i just the yarn is just look at this color it's beautiful yarn i'm really excited to be working with this yarn and to pretty much 
like to Madeline who sent me this, to Julie who sent me that. I mean, I'm so happy they have been very patient with me because it's just been taking a while, but I, I don't know what designing, I can't push it always. If I don't feel inspired, it's not gonna be fun. So, and I know the moment I feel inspired, I just go and get them finish up the, the pattern or the idea if it doesn't feel right, sometimes I have to leave it. And then there will be a moment when the idea just feels right and that is just the best feeling so i hope uh, they're okay with me being super slow if you're watching sorry i'm so slow with the whole thing but i think good things will come from taking my time and doing it the right way and when the moment feels right so yeah um, i have some other news but let me sit some more so i don't end up without a voice um yeah i have some really great news uh again if you follow me on instagram i've been a lot more active on instagram and i must say my ravelry page has been pretty much dead uh i just uh I, it's been feeling a little overwhelming going in there and answering things and so i'm a little behind i'm very sorry i will get back to that once i'm over my done with my maternity leave in the new year everything happens in the new year i will be so busy <laughs> but it's really nice and i'm very excited about it but i i have something exciting for also the new year it will probably come out in february so a lot of things for february but let me get it I don't know if you remember these babies that I had made last winter. Um, this is the yarn I had spun from my the wool from my parents' sheep. They have organic Gotland sheep, and I got the the wool spun in two shades: the charcoal and the middle gray. I think I called it, and um, they are just absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's Scotland with some Falkland Merino and the news <laughs> is that I managed to get double the amount uh, from my parents. Uh, my dad, he collected the yarn from the shearing in the spring and in the fall and we went to the mill, which is a local mill not so far away called Jelhold and uh, I had uh, organized the, yarn, the wool, the fleece in in three different piles, like the light one, so I could get the middle gray again because um, they're quite dark. Uh, but you can get a natural, naturally get a light one. The charcoal, especially the undercoat, is very. They don't have an under and upper coat, but the the fleece that's on the closest to the body is darker, and some of the sheep also are just darker from genetics. Um, but uh, I made two piles and then I made a middle pile because I just didn't know uh, what to do about that and I have thought to ask the... Hi, mommy. Okay, <laughs> my, my family just got home. I sent them out for a walk in the fog and they just got home, which I'm very happy about. They didn't get lost, uh, but there might be some background sound. I will try to wrap this one up. I'm also at, almost at one hour um yeah so i had three piles this time and he said should we do three colors and i was like why not because i actually really like to try to stay close to the natural colors i you you can add in white or black to these ones and get them darker or lighter but i really wanted to try to stay close to the natural colors uh, they're just so beautiful as you can see so i will have three colorways this year i'm really excited about it i don't really know what they will look like until they get back from the spinning mill and i will have double the amount so hopefully those who were sad they couldn't get anything last time will be happier this time because i have more i still don't know if it if i, I mean it's still a really small production we have my parents have six six sheep and a ram and they get have lambs uh, normally they have twins every year so you can imagine it's not that many sheep and i'm 
the, the, the amount of yarn I have is what is there and I will put it up like last year in smaller batches so it's a little more manageable for me um, and I, I, it will if it sells out really fast uh, I'm sorry I, I'm really happy it does but I also want as many people to be able to get the yarn as um, possible okay I had <laughs> I had a little family interruption, um, but I think it's also more or less time to end this episode. Um, yeah, just uh, a little, I wanted to talk about a little something. Um, I don't remember if I said that in the last episode, but I actually, I got a new camera uh, because I wanted to up the quality of my podcast episodes I wanted to up the quality of my pictures on Instagram I think they are a lot better now um, and also because I've been more interested in getting, becoming better at taking pictures I wanted to become better for my patterns but then I also just realized that it's a lot of fun and I don't know something I'm playing around with so I opened another um, a profile on Instagram in case you have seen it and wonder what's going on with that. I just thought not to post anything that is not really knitting related or has anything to do with fiber tails. I'm posting on that other profile, so it's just my pictures and um but I uh, yeah, I as you may may notice I'm still recording on my phone. And that is because I just said I don't know I, I have really limited time I know how to edit it edit the videos relatively fast on my phone and then at least I, I cut them together cut out all any bits I don't want and put them together and then normally I edit them in a program on my computer but just that I know the process and know how long it takes and what I need for it to work it's it will take a little bit uh, time to get to know how to film on my new camera. So uh, I hope in the new year as well, I will be able to give you a lot better quality content. Um, much I really want to make beautiful videos that are interesting to look at. I think it's okay with the phone, but I know I can do so much more with the camera. So I there's something to look forward to. Uh, and yeah, I just been really interested in that. So that is a little new thing I've been adding edit I've I've added to my list of things to do <laughs> and things I spend my time on getting to know how to shoot manually and stuff and it's been a lot of fun um so yeah I I feel like I have so many things coming up I am so excited about the future again again but when you're on maternity leave there's a period where, where things are just a little bit slow at least for me i live far from everything in the countryside uh, and spending the days with my little boy is just it's very nice but also just a bit slow and now i know that he's soon gonna start in the daycare and there will be a few hours uh, that i can actually focus on something a little more um a little little more focused focus on I'm so sorry if my language is lacking a lot but as I said I am right now he's waking me up every one and a half hour a night um and that is just the worst for your short for your memory for your speech for anything I feel like I look in the mirror and I see wrinkles coming out every day and gray hair and that's how it is it's a short time I know but I just yeah I'm sorry if I'm not being the best at uh, saying what I want to say. Uh, yeah, um, but I just have a lot of things planned for the new year and um, it will be very exciting how it, it's going to be with work because I actually right now I don't have any other jobs um, after my maternity so I'm yeah i'm excited to see what if i can find it would be really good for me to have something part-time if anybody knows of anything let me know <laughs> um but i'm yeah i 
I, I, I want to keep it real because I think it, it sounds very romantic being a knitwear designer and living from that. Uh, but in reality, it's pretty, I guess only a few people live from it. Uh, and even those struggle a little bit or it's not the easiest uh, from what I can understand. And I, I don't know, I just, I really want to live from my designing. I want to keep going with my designing. So I hope I can manage to find some kind of part-time job just to give me a little more stability to uh, not feel so much pressure from designing because right now it is not enough to live from especially in the summer months it's just the sale is very you know it it has its seasons right so uh, so that's a little bit of reality check coming back to after maternity leave have to figure out what to do with life and um, I'm really excited about it it's not that but I also we have to have some something to live from uh, so yeah i hope uh, everything will turn out great and I, it's this funny times in your life where you know things will change probably or some there will be some changes but you don't know what's gonna happen so it's both exciting it's the moment where you can try out new things but also a moment with a lot of uncertainty um, but I really want to keep podcasting. I hope I will have the time. I can take the time because again, it's not something I get. A, it's not really giving me any income from podcasting, but I am thinking of doing the Patreon. I talked about that before. Uh, it's just, I don't want to make a Patreon if I can't commit to putting out content regularly. Uh, and just right now I can't I don't know what's it what it's gonna look like uh, once he's in daycare how much time I will have in the beginning it's the plan is he will only be there for a short amount of time a day so it's um, yeah we will see we will see things will happen in the new year 2020 is gonna be super exciting I know there's a little still a little left of 2019 but I have to think ahead and um, so it was very lovely to chat with you all I missed it so much I just really uh, felt like doing this for a long time but just as I said it hasn't been on the top of my priority list if the house is a mess I think we should clean it first before I sit down and record well it's always a bit of a mess these days but I just really wanted to to sit down and talk to old friends and new friends and I'm not gone I'm still here I just yeah things are Brewing, and I hope um, there will be a lot of exciting stuff happening in the new year and maybe I can get to go to some knitting fe festivals and stuff uh, I had to say no to a lot of things this year because I'm not the person who feels super comfortable doing it with a small baby I know some people, that's what I said, some people are really okay with working and going places and doing things I can go places but I just, uh, yeah, it can get really overwhelming quickly if I have to focus on both the baby and networking or like talking to people and so on. So enough about that. Uh, I hope you had fun watching all the craziness you should see around me. It looks insane. And I will talk to you very soon, hopefully. I say that every time and lately it hasn't been very soon, but you know what I mean. I hope to be able to talk to you and in case anybody starts to ask there won't be any vlogmas this year it's just not gonna happen i won't have the time for that so no vlogmas okay i will hope you're all doing well see you bye <laughs>